Thank you. Well, I'm particularly happy to participate in this conference and uh, to see the, the, this important topic uh, uh, moving on. Uh, considerable research efforts have been made over the last 20 years to evaluate the ability of screening procedures to decrease mortality or incidence from colorectal cancer. Currently, the most uh, evaluated uh, screening test is uh, periodic stool testing, followed in case of positivity by a colonoscopy. Uh, the first uh, arguments uh, in favor of the efficacy, which is the theoric uh, benefit you can expect from screening, has been com is coming from case control studies. Uh, in these studies, you compare the screening history of cases dying from the cancer, for colorectal cancer and from controls. So the decrease in mortality that you that is, that are shown by these studies is uh, is valuable only in the case of a hundred percent participation, which is never the case. So most of these. Uh, uh, studies suggest uh, a decrease, in general, a decrease in colorectal cancer mortality varying between 30 and 40 percent. And uh, these uh, results are in agreement with those of uh, control studies. Uh, when they are performed in, in a general population, they bring arguments in favor, in favor of the effectiveness of, of screening, and in these studies, compliance was varying between 50 and 65 persons, so they are in agreement with a 30 to 40 percent decrease in mortality for compliance is 100 percent. So the results varied between 14 and 18 percent according to the studies. There is a, a very, very, the results are, are very similar in, in these three studies, and when you add the the U.S. study, which was performed in volunteers, which is uh, uh, the same as the result you can expect in participants, uh, those who are participating are willing to know what benefit they can expect from uh, uh, screening. And again, there is a, a general agreement with results varying between 32 and 39 percent. And this is what you can expect if you participate regularly to screening with a fecal occult uh, blood test using a Guayac test. Uh, participation is something very important. The, 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 the benefit of, uh, of screening depends on the performance of the test and on the participation. Uh, the, the participation was particularly high in uh, Nordic countries. It decreased over time because the test was proposed in the following screening rounds only to those who participated in the previous one. For, in, in contrary, in Burgundy, it was proposed to all the involved part, uh, uh, population at each screening round, and you see that there is no decrease in participation over time. And so uh, we, we, we can say that uh, uh, it has been... Uh, I have a problem. Uh, uh, it is possible uh, uh, in a different type of European countries to achieve a, a compliance varying between 50 and 65 percent. In, in, uh, in a Nordic country and the, in the UK, it's uh, you, uh, you, uh, a postal invitation allowed to uh, have a high participation rate, and it is not the case in France and probably in all European Latin countries. When you send the test by mail, compliance is too low, and this is why we have to invite uh, doctors to give the test, and you see that uh, uh, they, they, when they propose the test, a, a very high proportion is performed. So we have to use the two strategies in order to achieve a similar compliance to Nordic countries, a medical invitation phase and a postal invitation phase. Uh, uh, compliance is also an important point from the, 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 the economic point of view. Uh, we estimated with our model, with a 20-year uh, follow-up, uh, and uh, an average participation of 55%, which was what we have seen in the Burgundy study, 
but we expect an 18 percent decrease in mortality after 20 years, and the cost per year of life saved is slightly more than 3,000 euros. If you increase participation of 10 percent, so you move to 65 percent, of course you increase the decrease in mortality, and you decrease the cost per year of life saved by 20 percent. If uh, participation decreases to 35 percent, which, which is, has been reported in some study, you have only a 9 percent reduction mortality, which is uh, insignificant, and you have an 86 percent increase in the cost per year of life saved, because you have to make all the organization and you save just a few lives and it's very expensive. There is just one study who suggested a decrease in, in uh, incidence. It's the US study with a decrease of incidence varying between 17 and 20 percent uh, uh, according to uh, the fact that it, uh, the biannual or annual screening was chosen. So all these uh, results conducted as it has been underlined uh, to the inscription of uh, colorectal cancer screening in the European Code Against Cancer and uh, to an EU recommendation. Uh, you have not to hurry when you are dealing with uh, uh, politicians because the, the group of cancer experts made its, its recommendation in 1999. It was endorsed by the, the Commission in 2003 and we heard and we heard that uh, the parliament uh, will uh, uh, make some conclusion in 2007. So uh, you, need that to, to, you need to know that it takes much time to have uh, uh, public health results taken into practice. I do not insist on the, on the recommendation which has already been presented. And I want ju just to mention uh, the French uh, pilot program which is based on a strict organization. That means that uh, in, each, in each administrative areas, what we call department, we have a local structure in charge of implementing colorectal and breast cancer screening. Uh, as far as colorectal cancer is concerned, uh, we uh, subjects age 50 to 74 are, are involved, and they are proposed a, a Guayac test every two years. Of course, there are exclusion criteria. Uh, uh, subjects with symptoms must have direct colonoscopy as well as first degree relative with an index case be, be, uh, diagnosed before 65 or a personal history of colorectal cancer or adenoma or a total colonoscopy no, which was normal during the last five years. The program is based on the mobilization of physicians uh, in the community in the workplace. It's, uh, it's a hard work but when you succeed it works for years. Uh, and the, there is a, a centralization of test interpretation and a, a, a strict organization, a strict evaluation of a screening campaign. So at the start of a, of a screening campaign, an invitation letter is sent in to each individual involved in the screening program with an information brochure. There is a press campaign and posters are hung in GP's waiting room. The GPs explain and give uh, the test during the, generally the first six months of a year. Then after, they, there is after three years, uh, three months, a reminder letter with a questionnaire to uh, identify exclusion criteria. And after summer, the, the test is mailed to non-participants eventually with a reminder letter. Uh, that's the situation of a program at the moment. Uh, you have in, Greece, in green those were the pilot studies who started in 2003 or 2004. Then there was a, an extension in red uh, in, uh, in early 2007. And uh, recently, uh, 20 more areas were selected. So we can say that at the moment, uh, <coughs> uh, colorectal cancer screening has, has started or is about to start in 70% of the country, and we expect to reach more than 90% before the end of the year. Some data on uh, compliance. We can see that uh, during the first screening campaigns in uh, many areas in, in French Brittany, in, around Burgundy, in Alsace, it was uh, possible to have uh, 
uh, what was expected at least a 50% compliance rate, rate. It was lower in some areas, and particularly in the north and here in Isère, but the, the rules which were proposed were not followed up, and we, uh, we, there is, uh, we see that if uh, the strict organization is not working, compliance is low, and so change had to be made. Also, some uh, data from the first four areas, uh, they, about 700,000 uh, subjects, age 50 to 74, were uh, con uh, involved. About 10% were excluded because of the uh, criteria I ind indicated before. Uh, the compliance was 52% in these four areas. As expected, the positivity rate was less than 3%. The problem is that only uh, among positive tests, only 84% of uh, those who screened positive made a colonoscopy, and as expected, about 10% of that had a cancer, and uh, about one-third had adenoma. So this confirms that uh, uh, it's possible to reproduce the results seen in experimental studies. Just a word uh, on uh, uh, new tests, fecal immunochemical tests, which are probably the future. The best data that we have on, at the moment on the capacity of this test and the performance of this test has come from a, 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 a Japanese studies involving more than 24,000 asymptomatic subjects. The positivity rate, as you can see, was higher than with the GAIAC test, more than twice uh, what we expect. Uh, and uh, the sensitivity for cancers was 66%, and for high-grade dysplasia, 33%, and for large adenomas, 20%. Uh, at the moment, we know that uh, fecal immunochemical test has a higher sensitivity, but it, because of a high positivity rate, they have a lower specificity and a lower pro positive predictive value. We also have the interest that uh, an automated analysis is available, but there are still some questions which are not, not solved. Uh, there are no agreement if a test has to be done on one, two, or even three days testing, which is proposed by some experts. And furthermore, there is no agreement on which cutoff to choose, which depends on the, na the number of days of testing and uh, what is uh, 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 an unacceptable positivity rate, which probably uh, vary from one country to another. In France, we have a higher concentration of gastroenterologists in Europe, with more than 3,000 of them performing colonoscopy, but will not be able to achieve a positivity rate if the compliance is high, over 4%. So uh, it's, it's, there are difficult choices to be made, and it's too early because uh, we do not know enough to make a uh, strong recommendation at a European level. And this is what has said the, the Commission. Just a slide on uh, DNA markers, uh, which can be uh, uh, the future too, but uh, uh, not in, in the near future. Uh, a, a multiple target DNA test was uh, applied in a large asymptomatic population, and the results were very disappointing, uh, not very different from those reported in very small groups. Compl uh, sensitivity was only 50% for cancer, 15% for advanced adenomas, and 18% uh, for other adenomas. So you, you, this, this has to be improved, and uh, uh, we have to, 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 to wait uh, uh, for, for new tests. So stool-based DNA testing represents an emerging technology, which cannot yet be proposed in the current scheme of colorectal cancer screening. There are many questions which are left with the spectrum of DNA alterations in particularly to detect adenomas, the interval between tests, the acceptability to patients, and the cost is a big problem and must be lowered. It's about $800 per subject at the moment. So in conclusion, the Mockle test, I should say, any Guayac test similar to the Mockle test is a mass screening test which has been the most intensively evaluated. Converging data suggests an effectiveness 
in reducing colorectal cancer mortality. But to achieve this, this uh, goal, you have not to forget that compliance must be over 50% in the first screening. It must remain high when rescreening. A colonoscopy must be performed in case of positive tests, and that we have seen that it's a problem in certain countries. And uh, we need, if we want to have an effective problem, quality insurance. That means an organized program. Thank you.